Hello, I'm Nick Russell and this is HyperChess. It's a 3D version of Normal Chess, originally developed by Max Chappell. Um, I'll pull in an image here, you can see the uh, original HyperChess set. And I just wanted to uh, create a computer game out of it, so you could play uh, online with other people, um, kind of make it more available. Uh, we have uh, custom skins available. Alright, if you want to uh, change the skin, you can create your own. Um, there's a separate file that has all the models that you can swap out your own models or models you grab somewhere else. It makes it uh, pretty easy to kind of set up your own style for the board. Uh, in order to move a piece, you just select it and it'll show you where you can move, where you can attack to. Uh, pawns um, move forward and they also move what you might call sideways, right? So this pawn can move up, since this is white, white's always on the bottom, black's always on the top. So I have all these side moves available, and I can move up here. Um, I can never move down with a black, or sorry, with a white pawn, because that would be moving backwards. Similar to like uh, normal chess. I'm gonna go ahead and take this bishop. Um, I'm not using the other player on this side at the moment. We'll go ahead and connect them over the network uh, soon enough so we can see how that works. But now you'll see this uh, tile is available to attack because it's a diagonal for this pawn. If I move the pawn up, you can see again this diagonal is also available to attack from. That's just how pawns move. They're, they're kind of the most complicated uh, change compared to original chess. Uh, bishops, as we've already seen, they just move diagonals. Uh, in, in any direction as long as it's a diagonal. So if the bishop's on white, it's always going to stay on white. The knights, uh, same as normal chess, they can move over two and then over one at a 90 degree angle. So it's just always in L shape, just uh, in more directions now. All right, so if I move this knight over here, I can attack all the way up at this rook. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then they, that goes down to the graveyard. And uh, now let's see how the rooks move. Straight lines, very simple. Always in a straight line. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect these two now over the network. Uh, first I'll reset the board here. Host the game. And now we will connect to it by typing in the IP address. Both players are actually on the same computer, so I'm just gonna type in localhost. Connect to game and the buttons are all grayed out, so that's how we know it's working. And now, when I make a move, I'll go ahead and move this knight. As soon as we activate the window, it, it'll be updated. Now, I'll move the knight with this player. And again, you'll see the update over here. If you load a previously saved board, also it will update over the network, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Here's a previous one I saved. All pieces are just kind of in random positions open and again as soon as we update the window of the opponent it's all active uh, here's a queen so let's go ahead and move the queen and see how they move I um, mean as you suspect they can pretty much move uh, anywhere a straight line or diagonal in any direction the only moves they can't make are those of the knights moves right and then the king is the same way, but can only move one square at a time. I'll go ahead and disconnect, and uh, we'll check out how the pieces move again. When we're not connected, now we can move our own pieces and not see them update. And I'll go ahead and host now actually with the other player. Go over here, type in localhost, connect to game. I'm gonna have to update that. There we go. And that 
is everything, I believe. We've shown uh, how all the pieces move. We've talked a little bit about the different art styles that you can uh, load pretty easily. The plugin works by knowing what the names of the pieces are, right? So every piece has a unique name. This says it's a rook, so that's how the plugin knows to move it like a rook. Uh, and then there's a unique number identifier. The tiles all have unique names. There's also, I wrote a Mac script that will name all the tiles for you. So you don't have to go through and manually name every single one because that's just a pain to do. Um, and also just in case you wanted to edit the map yourself um, and change the board in some way, you can just run that script and it'll, it'll name all the tiles, which is really helpful. But um, yeah, that's that's everything so far. If you have any questions, uh, let me know, or maybe any kind of features you'd like to see added, I'd uh, love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.